I have something really exciting to share with you. This was something that I discovered um, back when I was at home and I was doing a lot of research for my book and there were just things that were archeological significance to the Bible. And this is one of those things that's been pretty much hidden from the view of the world. And so I want to tell this story about the discovery of the tombs of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Some writers have claimed that there is virtually no archeological evidence to back up the historical claims of the gospels. The truth is that tremendous archeological evidence has been discovered in Israel that proves the accuracy of the New Testament. Over a century ago, a French Christian archeologist, Charles Clermont Gounod, wrote a little-known report dated November 13, 1873, from Jerusalem to the Palestine Exploration Fund. In his report, he told of his monumental discovery in a sepulcher cave near Bethany of a group of Jewish ossuaries, stone coffins, from the first century of the Christian era. And to his great surprise, Claremont Gonneau found that these ancient Jewish stone coffins, known as ossuaries, contained the names of numerous individuals mentioned in the New Testament as members of the Jerusalem church. Despite its importance, this report was not published in the newspapers of the day. And as a result, it was virtually lost to history. And that's why I'm bringing it out now, because people don't know this at all. And several years ago, he said, I purchased a book from a rare book dealer in London, which contained this obscure report by Charles Claremont Gonneau, the 1874 report published by the Palestine Exploration Fund included this translation of several of these inscriptions, which indicated that he had discovered the tombs of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, as well as numerous other Christians from the first century church. A Christian newspaper from Israel, the Jerusalem Christian Review, has carried several fascinating articles in the last few years about the wonderful archaeological discoveries that confirm the historical accuracy of the gospel account. In the spring of 1873, Effendi Abu Saud, while constructing his house on the eastern slopes of the Mount of Olives near the road to ancient Bethany, accidentally discovered a cave that proved to be an ancient burial catacomb, and inside he found 30 ancient stone coffins. Professor Charles Claremont Gonneau examined the ossuaries in this ancient family sepulchral cave carved out of limestone rock. The Jews in the first century buried their dead either in the ground or in a tomb. Several years later, they would clean the bones of the skeleton and rebury these bones in a small limestone ossuary, often 45 inches long and 20 inches wide and 25 inches high. The lids of these ossuaries are triangular, semicircular, or rectangular. Inscriptions containing the name and identification of the deceased were painted or engraved on the sides or on the lids of the ossuaries in Hebrew or Greek. Claremont Gonneau was excited to note that several ossuaries were inscribed with crosses or the name Jesus, proving that these Jewish deceased were Christians. Although he was unable to take photographs, he did take squeezes with a special cloth of the ornamented surfaces as well as of the inscriptions. Engraved on the sides of three of these ossuaries from this cave were the names of Eleazar, the Hebrew form of the Greek name Lazarus, Martha and Mary, and these names were followed by the sign of the cross, proving they were Christian. In the Gospel of John, we read the touching story of 
Messiah raising his friend Lazarus from the dead. Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. That's John 11.1. 1. Claremont Gonneau noted that this was one of the most important archaeological discoveries ever made concerning the origins of the early New Testament church. He wrote, This catacomb on the Mount of Olives belonged apparently to one of the earliest families which joined the new religion of Christianity. In this group of sarcophagi, some of which have the Christian symbol and some have not, we are, so to speak, witnessing the actual unfolding of Christianity. Personally, I think that many of the Hebrew-speaking people whose remains are contained in these ossuaries were among the first followers of the Messiah. The appearance of Christianity at the very gates of Jerusalem is, in my opinion, extraordinary and unprecedented. Somehow, the new Christian doctrine must have made its way into the Jewish system. The association of the sign of the cross with the name of Jesus, written in Hebrew alone, which is Yeshua, constitutes a valuable fact. The 1874 report contained the following additional inscriptions found on ossuaries. Hebrew inscriptions. Um, Salome, wife of Judah, engraved in very small characters, a cruciform sign. Now, Salome, she went to the tomb with Mary Magdalene and helped her out. And I actually believe, from what I've read, that she very well is the mother of the sons of Zebedee, which is James and John. Then the second ossuary was Judah with the cross, perhaps the husband of Salome. And then third, Judah the scribe, on another face of the sarcophagus, Judah, son of Eleazar the scribe. And four, Simeon the priest, Cohen. I think that's incredible. They came in to have Jesus circumcised, and he was the priest presiding there. Then they found Martha, daughter of Pesach, Perhaps the name is Jewish as well as Christian. Eliezer, which is um, Hebrew of the name in Greek, which is Lazarus, son of Nathalu. The form Nathai for Nathan is not uncommon. The next one, number seven, is Salamtsayan, daughter of Simeon the priest. The name of the woman, Salam, or Zion, is the greatest interest. It is the name Salamsian of Josephus, daughter of Herod. Greek inscriptions. One, Jesus twice repeated with the cross. Two, Nathaniel accompanied by a cross. Don't you know that Philip went to Nathaniel and said, We have found the Messiah? And he said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And he said, follow me. Well, this could be Nathaniel. Now here is something really stunning. It is interesting to note that Claremont Gano also found in one of the ossuaries three or four small instruments in copper of bronze, much oxidized, consisting of an actual small bell surmounted by a ring. The Arabs thought that they were kind of castanets. Can we trace here the equivalent of the bells hung on the robe of the high priest? And do these ornaments come from the sarcophagus of our Simeon the priest? Oh, man. And this has been hushed up, you guys, so... Nobody knows that these things were found, and so this is so important to tell this story. The French archaeologists realized that there is a high degree of probability that these tombs belong to the family of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, the close friends of Jesus. Claremont Gonneau wrote, what gives additional value to these short inscriptions is that they furnish a whole series of names found in the Gospels. 
in their popular local syro chaldaic forms. The presence of the names of Jesus and Martha, of which we only knew historically that it was the feminine form of the Aramaic, would alone be sufficient to make this collection important from an exegetic point of view. By a singular coincidence, which from the first struck me forcibly, these inscriptions found close to the Bethany Road and very near the site of the village containing nearly all the names of the personages in the gospel scenes which belonged to the place. Lazarus, which is Eleazar in Hebrew, Simon, and Martha, a host of other coincidences occur at the site of all the most evangelical names. In addition, the Italian scholar P. Bagatti discovered another catacomb holding 100 ossuaries on the western side of the Mount of Olives, opposite the Temple Mount near the Catholic chapel called Dominus Flevit. Coins minted by Governor Varius Gratus in 16 AD proved that these tombs were used for burial of Christians before the fall of Jerusalem in AD 70. That is incredible. Several of the coffins in the cave belong to a family of priests buried in the first century, and based on the inscribed crosses and the name Jesus or Yeshua, Bagatti concluded that several of these priests were followers of Jesus Christ. They were followers of the Messiah. Bagatti found many ossuaries containing the following names inscribed on their sides together with the sign of the cross or the name of Jesus. Jonathan, Joseph, Jarius, Judah, Matthias, Menachem, Salome, Simon, and Zechariah. Many of these names appear in the New Testament records of the early church at Jerusalem. One ossuary contained the Greek inscription Iota Chi Beta, which read, Jesus Christ, the Redeemer. Whew, that gives me chills. Without question, the most fascinating ossuary was the one inscribed with the crosses and the name of Shapira. And this is a unique name which has not been found in contemporary Jewish literature outside the New Testament passage of Acts 5.1. Luke recorded the death of this woman and her husband when they lied to God in the church in Acts 5, 5 through 10. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession. Now, they put... It says Sapphira in the Bible, but the name on the ossuary was Shapira or Shapira with an uh, S-H. And Sapphira has no H at the beginning. During the fall of 1945, Dr. Eleazar Sukinik of Hebrew University investigated another first century Jewish catacomb at the southern end of the Kidron Valley on the road to Bethlehem. He found several ossuaries with the sign of the cross, Greek inscriptions, a coin minted in A.D. 41 for King Herod Agrippa I, proving the tomb was sealed by A.D. 42. Professor Sukinik concluded that the ossuaries contain almost the whole dictionary of names in the New Testament. One coffin had a surprising dedication in Greek to Jesus, followed by the exclamation, Yeho, meaning Jehovah or the Lord. The inscription reads, To Jesus the Lord. In light of the AD 42 date for the sealing of this tomb, the presence of this dedication to Jesus the Lord attests to the acceptance by Christians of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, as God within 10 years of the death and resurrection of Jesus, or in Hebrew, Yeshua. 
Christian theologian Professor Alexander Hopkins commented on this significant inscription as follows. The inscription, which was hidden for almost 2,000 years and inscribed at least two decades before any part of the New Testament was written, bears a personal testimony of faith, a message from the past with a very modern meaning for the present. Several years ago, they found another Jewish Christian ossuary in Jerusalem that contained the inscription, Alexander, son of Simon of Cyrene. The Gospel of Mark refers to this person as follows. Now they compelled a certain man, Simon. Whew, shakes me up. Now they compelled a certain man, Simon, a Cyrenian, the father of Alexander and Rufus, as he was coming out of the country and passing by to bear his cross. Mark 15, 21. So, why has this all been shut up and hidden from the view of the whole world? Because you can't admit that Jesus Christ is God that came down in the flesh to bear our sins on the cross so that we could go back through the curtain in the Holy of Holies, through the two cherubim, and go back into a Garden of Eden-like state to dwell with the Lord forever. It chokes me up, too, about the finding of these um, instruments, because they could be, you know, if the Arabs thought they were castanets, they probably were symbols which used to be called zills, and because I'm a percussionist, I know this stuff, <laughs> and they were, you know, usually on a string, and they clapped them together like finger symbols, and uh, what I find fascinating is that one of the most famous symbol companies today is Zildjian, and the first part of their name is Zill, and they have been making symbols. I think their family came from Armenia or Turkey, someplace like that. And they they go back in the genealogical line as being symbol makers of certain alloys that they mixed to hammer out musical instruments and zills. So Zildjian is really incredible that this company exists to this day. And I've often wondered if they made any of the symbols for the temple musicians. I'm trying to share with you things that will increase your faith and give you hope. And um, I'm touched to the heart by this. And to think, you know, I wrote in my book about Simeon in particular. And there were things that the Lord showed me that were incredible. And I truly believe that there's a lot more to this story than meets the eye. So... I think that they have moved these ossuaries into that, um, what did I call it, Dominus Flevit building, and that was the place where Jesus wept, and those ossuaries are in there, and they actually found Mary and Martha's ossuaries together, underground, side by side, and they were in situ, which means in the original state that they were found. And it was a little hole in the ground, and they were together. So, to me, uh, this increases my faith just at a time where everything in the world is horrendously horrible, and we are just trying to hold on and keep our faith going. This story has to be told, and... Um, years ago when I was at home, I actually had saved the article, and I believe I had the pictures of the ossuaries in situ, but I could not find them, and I couldn't find it when I tried to look it up online, but 
I actually saw their ossuary or, you know, ossuaries. And to think that, I'm sorry, I'm crying tears. Um, the reality of the truth is hitting us right in the heart. And it's important for you to hear this story. So I'll just leave you with the good feelings of the truth of what's been discovered that was hushed up. Now, I have some more stories that will be coming. There was something incredible that they discovered in 1953 that has also been hushed up, partly by the Roman Catholic Church to not let the truth get out. And then they had some, oh, you always have the naysayers, and so they try to reinterpret what the script says to say something else so they can deny the truth of it. In this situation, you have all of these people. We know that Simeon was the priest that circumcised Jesus. He said, now my eyes have seen. He, he lived to see the Messiah come and he held him in his hands and blessed him. And now here is Simeon the priest ossuary discovered with these musical instruments and whether they're the bells of the high priest garment I do not know but they definitely could have been used by the temple musicians by the high priest so it's incredible this is just one more story I wanted to share with you something that needs to come out and the truth be told because all of this has been covered up and the whole world knows nothing about these discoveries. So I'll just leave you with those good feelings and good vibes in your heart. And know that the King of Glory is coming. And they identified him as Jesus the Lord. As God. And it's just very touching. Okay, I have a little bit more to add to this story, so I want to read a little bit more pertaining to these ossuaries. Under the sensational title, Eyewitness Story of Crucifixion Discovered, newspapers all over the world reported under the dateline of October 3rd, 1945, that a discovery of first historical and theological importance had been made. The dispatch from Jerusalem contained the following startling statement. Probably written within a few weeks of the crucifixion, writes the Daily Herald Jerusalem correspondent, it is by far the oldest record. The next oldest account was written over a century later, and its authenticity has not been proved. The newly discovered writings, which are in clear Greek, were in four stone coffins in a vault just outside Jerusalem on the way to Bethlehem. They consist of a bitter, moving lamentation. Cautious readers of the report were not too much impressed because of several obvious illogical statements contained in it. That the eyewitnesses of the crucifixion were still lamenting Christ's death bitterly a few weeks after the crucifixion was unbelievable, as they were all acquainted with the fact of his resurrection. That the next oldest account of Christ's death was written over a century later, not before A.D. 131, and that its authenticity has not been proved was furthermore a gross misstating of facts because it is indisputably recognized that the Gospels were written in the first century after Christ, some within 40 years of the death of Jesus. Subsequent reports from London and Jerusalem appearing in the newspapers a few days later tempered the high expectations aroused by the earlier sensational account of the discovery. It was learned that a Jewish tomb had been found containing several ossuaries, bone receptacles, and that the sign of the cross had been marked on each of the four sides of one ossuary with the word woe appearing among the inscriptions as the basis for the, quote, bitter moving lamentation of the first report. In February of 1946, an excellent critical article appeared in the Biblical 
archaeologist written by Professor Carl Kragling of Yale Divinity School under the title Christian Burial Urns. Without being acquainted yet with all the facts of the new discovery, Kragling warned his readers against overexcitement and recalled the case of the ossuaries found by Charles Claremont Gonneau in 1873 in a tomb on the way to Bethany containing the names Jesus, Mary, Martha, Lazarus with cross signs on them, which are not recognized by any scholar as belonging to the family in whose house Christ dwelt. The fact that the names Jesus, Joseph, Martha, or other biblical names appear on ossuaries is understandable because they were very common among Jews of the time of Christ. Such was Kreling's argument against accepting these bone receptacles as early Christian witnesses. A letter written by Father M. Abel, Epigraphy and Archaeology in the Dominican Escole Biblique, in Jerusalem, appeared in the Homiletic and Pastoral Review for March of 1946. It presented further facts on the discovery in a dispassionate way, and from it the reader could draw the conclusion that nothing more than a few Jewish ossuaries had been found. Life published an account of the discovery in its issue of December 22, 1947. Carefully avoiding any sensational claims, it stated the opposing views on the find and advised its readers that the final conclusion could only be made after the full publication of the excavations. This has finally been done by the excavator Professor E. L. Sukinik of the Hebrew University in Jerusalem in an article, The Earliest Records of Christianity, which appeared in the October through December number of the American Journal of Archaeology for 1947, but which was not distributed before July 1948. It is learned from this report that in September of 1945, an underground burial chamber was discovered south of Jerusalem on the road to Bethlehem. Into its walls, five shafts, known as kokim, had been cut containing 11 ossuaries or bone receptacles, which range in size from 16 by 10 by 11 and a half inches to 26 by 14 inches. From the pottery and the lamps found in the tomb, the form and character of the inscriptions on the ossuaries and a coin of King Agrippa I, which dates from A.D. 42 through 43, Dr. Sukinik says that the tomb must have been in use from the first century before Christ until the middle of the first century after Christ. Five of the ossuaries bear short inscriptions of names, three in Hebrew letters and two in Greek. The inscription on the ossuary number reads, Simeon Barsaba. Sukinic points out that this name was known thus far only from the New Testament, where it also appears as a family name of one Joseph in Acts 1, 23, and of another Judas in Acts 15, 22, both early Christian believers. The inscription on ossuary number four reads, Miriam, daughter of Simeon. On ossuary number two are found three Hebrew letters. The abbreviation for Mattathias or Matthias, a name appearing both in the New Testament and in Jewish literature. One of the Greek interpretations on ossuary number seven was written in charcoal and has the words, Jesus, woe. And the other is incised on the lid of the ossuary. Number eight reads, Jesus, Allah the last word having been suggested by Sukinic to be an expression of mourning taken over from the Hebrew and Aramaic. Inasmuch as the last mentioned ossuary has a cross drawn in charcoal on all of its four sides, the excavator who is recognized as the greatest authority on Jewish ossuaries holds the opinion that it is of Christian origin. So, Sukinic is the greatest authority on Jewish ossuaries.
Without insisting that the cross had already become a venerated symbol of Christianity, he thinks that it may be a pictorial expression of the event, tantamount to exclaiming that he was crucified. And his suggestion, therefore, is that the crosses and graffiti on ossuaries number seven and eight represent a lamentation for the crucifixion of Jesus by some of his disciples. Dr. Sukinik closes his report with the following words. All our evidence indicates that we have in this tomb the earliest records of Christianity in existence. It may also have a bearing on the historicity of Jesus and the crucifixion. Until a few years ago, the appearance of the cross was considered to be evidence of a late date of the object bearing this sign because it was thought that the cross was not considered a Christian symbol before 200 AD. A discovery made in the winter of 1939 in the ruins of Herculaneum in Italy has, however, reversed this opinion entirely. Herculaneum is one of the three cities which was entirely destroyed by the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in AD 79. And everything found in its ruins, therefore, dates from before that event of AD 79. In one room on the second floor of a house, a square in the middle of the back wall was covered with very fine plaster in which the sign of a Latin cross, 17 inches long and 14 inches wide, was deeply engraved. Holes of nails shown that a wooden cross had been fastened to the wall. A wooden chest having the appearance of an altar stood below the cross. <laughs> Professor A. Mariori, the discoverer of the place, after several attempts to find an explanation of this find, came to the conclusion that the room was a Christian place, a conclusion which has been generally accepted ever since. This discovery has also changed the evaluation of the group of ossuaries described first by Charles Claremont Gonneau in 1873, which were mentioned above. In his first communication, the famous French archaeologist described them as Judeo-Christian sarcophagi. The ossuaries in question had been found in a tomb on the Mount of Olives, and it's also called the Mount of Offense, not far from Bethany. The Hebrew inscriptions present names like Judah, Salome, Simon, Joshua, Martha, Eleazar, the Hebrew equivalent of the Greek Lazarus, Hananiah, Nathan, Pesach, while among the Greek names, Mary appears, and twice Jesus with the sign of the cross. Then, when Claremont Gonneau published his final report on the discovery in 1899, he expressed some doubts about the Christian origin of the ossuaries. Its meaning is questionable. I do not think that it can be anything but the sign of the cross. But I do not overlook the difficulties which beset that view, considering our hitherto received ideas on the one hand as the earliest period at which the cross was recognized as the emblem of Christianity, and on the other as to the latest date commonly attributed to all Hebrew inscriptions in the ancient square characters in Jerusalem and the neighborhood. If this cross is really a Christian symbol, we must either admit that the chronological rules upon which all archeologists have hitherto justly agreed with regard to the Christian monuments in the West do not apply without modification to Christian monuments in the East, or else that the theory that every Hebrew inscription at Jerusalem and in its neighborhood is necessarily earlier than Titus's siege or at all events that the foundation of Aelia Capitolina, which Jerusalem was renamed by the Romans, must not be regarded as absolutely true, and that Hebrew inscriptions must exist belonging to a date later than that epoch. Our case, therefore, if proved, would tend either to put back a date agreed on by Christian archaeology, or else bring down to later times one admitted in matters of Semitic Epigraphy. Dr. Sukinik, however, is convinced that the cult place in Herculaneum and the discovery of the new tombs prove that the sign of the cross existed as a Christian symbol in the first century after Christ and that the tombs described by Claremont Gonneau and himself contained remains of Jewish Christians. 
His overall conclusions have been succinctly expressed by J.F. Daniel, the editor-in-chief of the American Journal of Archaeology, in his foreword to the special reprint of Sukinik's article. Quote, this tomb was in use from shortly before the birth of Christ until not more than 20 years after the crucifixion. It belonged to a family which is mentioned in the New Testament and certain members of which were among the personal followers of Christ, the Messiah. Inscriptions and crosses drawn on two of the ossuaries express the grief of members of the family at the crucifixion, and they are by far the earliest known records of Christianity. A word of caution may, however, have its place here. Although Dr. Sukenik is the greatest authority on Jewish ossuaries, and his judgment to see Christian records in these tombs is of the highest value as coming from a Jewish scholar, it should be remembered never Nevertheless, that other scholars of fame have so far refused to recognize these tombs as Christian. Are you kidding me? Their argument is that the inscriptions contain common Jewish names of the time and that the name Jesus was in frequent use. The sign of the cross may have had a magical significance, being intended perhaps to guard the bones against demonic powers. They consider the Greek word IOU which is, i.e., woe, to be a rare spelling of Jehu and Aloth considered by Sukinic as an expression of lamentation, as a surname of that particular Jesus of Ossuary number eight. The possibility exists that the tombs are Christian and that in the one found in 1873 were buried members of that family in whose house Jesus frequently lodged, although it is rather difficult to explain why Martha was the daughter of Pesach and Lazarus was the son of Nathan, whereas the Bible mentions them as brother and sister. As with every single archaeological discovery, you always have people that try to disprove it and are naysayers. They try to reinterpret the script to try to prove that it's not what it is. And this is always the problem because even Barry Schwartz, the official STIRP team shroud photographer, told me that science looks at things very differently than theologians do. So they're trying to prove things through a scientific method without the belief and faith. And the theologians know by faith and don't need things that are obvious proved to them in a scientific way. That is an awful lot of inscriptions from the New Testament to deny it. You know, I mean, if they found, let's just say they found the tomb of Moses and it had the name Moshe on it, you know, how do you know it's the Moshe? Well, you'd have to prove it by science. You'd have to prove it through, you know, some sort of testing. Uh, and, and I don't trust radiocarbon testing because it's been proven to be wrong. But, you know... I mean, how much proof do you really need? And the fact that Mary and Martha were discovered with crosses etched and lamentation, words of woe. And what I was thinking about that is that was something that was said when the monarchy was destroyed. Woe is us, they said in Lamentations. The crown has been removed from our head, meaning that the monarchy had come to an end and they would not have a king for centuries afterward. But in the last days, in that last seven, they're going to be mourning for the Messiah in that time of seven. And at the end of the seven, he descends from heaven in the second coming, after the time of Jacob's trouble. Um, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out who these people are. And the fact that Simeon was the priest that was there at the circumcision of the Messiah says to me that 
these are the legitimate ossuaries and they should be looked at as such. So I hope that uh, adding this little bit helped and I will see you in the next episode.